In this video, I'm going to show you how to use AI tools to generate a consistent character again and again. If you've tried to use AI tools to generate a character, you've probably realized that it is really tricky to get them inside of images again and again. For example, I went to Midjourney, use character reference, and this is the image of me that it generated. And it's close, but it's not exactly me. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an advanced way for you to pull this off and create professional images. Let's get to it. So let's say that I am working on a film project and I am trying to generate this character again and again. So this is Jagger on the Curious Refuge team. And let's say that I cast her in a film. Well, there are a lot of different options that are available to you. Some of them are more user-friendly and other ones are more advanced. And some of them are so advanced that I really would not recommend using them because you can get lost in the details. But I want to compare and contrast three of the most popular methods for pulling this off. And I want you to tell me which one is better. So the first method will give us this result. And if you compare that to what Jagger looks like, I gotta say, this really does not look like her. It's a really good image and it has dynamic lighting and it does look cinematic, but ultimately I just don't think it did a good job at putting her into the scene. Option number two looks like this and that definitely is Jagger inside of the scene, but ultimately I really feel like the overall composition, the lighting, it's coming across as very flat, very stock photography. And there's really some issues, like look at the number of water cups that are on those tables there. Like it, it looks really off. And our third method here is this image here. You can see that that is clearly Jagger with a very uh, cinematic result that does look realistic. So if you're curious, the first method was mid journey. The second method was free pick. And the third method is using a custom model using Fall AI. So the reason why I want to use Fall AI is because it allows you to generate images using complex workflows that usually are only available to people who are using Comfy UI, but you don't have to have the deep technical understanding of Comfy UI to pull it off. So let's get started. To kick things off, you need to go to the fall.ai website. You can click the explore page to take a look at the models here. I'm going to select this one that says Flux LoRa Fast Training. And you can see right off the bat here, we have this section that's asking us to drag and drop some images. So what you need to do is find images of your subject. Here's a collection of a few different images of Jagger that she sent over. And I should note that it's very helpful to have a wide variety of images that you can work with. The more variety of images that you have of the actual subject, the better the AI system will be at generating the images. So if it's all from the exact same photo shoot, it's gonna be very tricky to get a character in different styles. Whereas if you upload a lot of different versions of images of your subject, it will do a better job. So when you're ready, all you have to do is select all of those images. I'd say try to shoot for at least 10 images, more is better, and drag and drop them into the window here. And for your trigger word, you want to select the name of your subject. So for us, we'll say Jagger and we will not select is style. If we were training it on a specific style, for example, if it was going to be in a custom hand-drawn style that we wanted to replicate again and again, we would select that button, but we will keep that unchecked. Go ahead and click on that more button. Make sure create mask is selected and then steps can be at 1000. And when you're ready, go ahead and click start. So the whole process will take like five to 10 minutes, depending on how many images that you inputted. And you will see your files. If you click this drop down menu here, you'll see a download button for your config file and then also your diffuser LoRa file, which is the LoRa file that you definitely want to download. You also can copy a direct link to that LoRa model. I recommend copying that link and then just pasting it 
inside a spreadsheet or a document just to, to keep it safe and in one place. Uh, you also have the ability to download the files and put them on your machine. That's really helpful if you're working on a custom workflow or even taking this to a system like Comfy UI. It allows you to upload the file. So what we're going to do to use this model now is go ahead and click Run Inference. And that will pop up Flux Dev with LoRa's. So that basically is allowing you to use your LoRa to create a prompt. So the LoRa is the custom trained model on our subject. So for your prompt here, we can say an editorial photo of Jagger in a coffee shop. So we'll keep it super simple. Obviously you could get into as much detail as you wanted to. Uh, you can talk about the overall styles that you're looking for, the film grain, the lens. You can get really detailed. And inside of our AI filmmaking course at Curious Refuge, we go into a lot more depth about how you can prompt specifically to get very cinematic results, but we'll just keep it really simple for now. And under path here, you see that we have a URL link uh, you can just copy and paste the LoRa link from the previous step into this box if you don't have it. And you can turn your scale up to one. You also can add more LoRa's if you want to combine things together. It can get a little wonky when you start combining too many things together. But, you know, if you had a subject and a style and you wanted to fuse them together, that's a good way to do that. Under more here, we can change the image size. We'll select landscape here. And number of inference steps we'll keep at default of 28. Guidance scale, 3.5, totally fine. Uh, I really like uh, dialing that in after I've rendered the first image because it just helps you to know uh, just the direction that you're wanting to go with it. And for the number of images, I'm going to turn this up to four. I like generating more than one image at a time. You know, just more iteration gives you more options for you to select the best result. And we'll go ahead and click Run. And after about 10 seconds, it generated four different images. Let's take a look. So we have number one here and it did a good job you can see that the hair is different and the clothing is different so if you wanted the hair or the clothes to be something specific you would need to prompt that in but it did a really good job we have this one here again different haircut different clothing but it did a, a good job and we have this one here which yeah that actually does look like magazine quality uh, did a really good job and then we have this one here much more candid but not too bad and i should also note that it put Jagger in the scene here, which is cool, but the background characters are different characters. It can be really tricky for other AI systems to generate images with consistent characters that also have other characters in the background. So I think it did a pretty good job. Now, I think that out of all the photos, this one is probably my favorite in terms of overall composition. So I'll go ahead and save that one. So here is the image that we are working with. And if you zoom in here, you can see there's really not a lot of resolution. The image is only 1024 by 576. So a really small image. We basically need to up-res this image if we want to use it on a professional workflow, or even if you were going to use this image inside an AI video tool, you wanna to provide it more detail and more information because you get better results. So you're probably wondering, how are we going to up-res this image? Well, there's a lot of options that are out there. Crea is one option. You can also use open source tools as well as nodes inside of Comfy UI. But the easiest and most professional option is to use Gigapixel. It's by the team at Topaz, and it's one of my favorite tools for up images. So all I'm going to do is drag and drop that image here. So we'll just drag and drop it. And we will go ahead and select a higher scale here. So I'll do times six. So we want to make this image six times larger than the original. And go ahead and select high fidelity. So that will give you just more overall resolution here. And under settings here, I like keeping it all at one. So uh, I'm not trying to fix compression or deblurring or denoising or anything like that. I want as much of the detail as possible in the final scene. And I'm also not going to select face recovery because whenever you select face recovery, it can create kind of plastic faces, which I do not love. So it's pretty cool because you can see as we zoom in here, there's just a lot more detail that was not present in the overall image that is on the left. So especially like, for example, the details on the lips here, right? So there's like actual like cracks in the lips. You can see there's details in the skin, uh, like just like 
little indentations and things like that that look really realistic. Whereas the first image here, you can see it just is completely, it's just pixelated, like there's no information there. So it really just does a great job at up those images. And when you're ready, all you have to do is click save image and go ahead and click save. So there you go, here's our final image. And if we zoom in here, you can see there's just tons of details, right? Like individual hair strands, there's tons of texturing inside of the scarf here. So it did a really good job. It stayed true to the bokeh and the overall lens qualities of the image that was generated. So uh, an amazing job from Gigapixel. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Of course, if you wanna learn more about how to get the most out of AI tools to create everything from films to advertisements, I highly recommend the courses over at CuriousRefuge.com. And of course, if you want to get the latest AI tutorials and news directly here on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.